familiar, I think, with the New Testament, right? <laughs> We're all familiar with the Old Testament to a degree. We understand the New Testament is the New Covenants. We understand the Old Testament is the Old Covenants. And we understand it's commonly called the uh, Age of Grace we are in from Christ versus uh, the Age of Law in the Old Covenant. <clears throat> and we know now that we are free in Christ. The Amen. Age of Grace, the Age of Freedom. In fact, it says in Romans 8, 2, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. And Romans 7, 6 says, But now we have been delivered from the law, having died to what we were held by, so that we should serve in the newness of the Spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. Amen? Amen. And so we talk a lot about freedom here. We talk a lot about our identity in Christ. We are in Christ. And Sean digs in great, um, sharing just the freedom we have in Christ. So I'm not going to go all the way that way. But I want to ask uh, one question. In this new covenant we are living in, in this age of grace and freedom, are there any laws we are still under? You know, not saying anything out loud, you can. That's my question. And my answer is yes, we are under the law of love. We are under the law of love in this new covenant. In fact, uh, one of my favorite quotes that's actually in my Bible, it says, The gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, exchanges the oppressive bondage of the law for the even greater bondage of love. Yes. Isn't that good? I am not under the Mosaic law. I am under the law of Christ. I am under the law of love. Jesus came and he turned this around in me. He turned it inward. He made it a heart issue. He made it internal. He said primarily to the Pharisees, he said, You clean the outside of the cup, but the inside is filthy. Clean the inside, get your heart right, and the rest will take care of itself. He said, you don't murder, but inside you hate. He said, you don't commit adultery, but inside you lust. You don't love. He said, you strain out a gnat on the outside to look good and religious, but you swallow a camel on the inside. Come on. He even said, you're like well-manicured cemeteries. <laughs> dead inside, and lawless. He said you're like well-manicured cemeteries. You're dead inside, and you're lawless. And when he said lawless, he means loveless. It's all about the heart. In fact, Jesus quotes Isaiah and says, These people draw near to me with their mouths, and they honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and in vain they worship me. Jesus came and he just put it all on the heart, didn't he? He said, you're doing this, and I want it from the heart. I don't want just this outside obedience. In Matthew 22, he says, Teacher, what is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus said, Love God with all your heart and soul and mind. This is the first and greatest, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. On these two hang all the law and on all the prophets. Keep only these two and you will be obeying all of the law. And I like how this is played out in one of the stories in the Bible. If you want to go to Matthew chapter 19, there's a story and it's just called the story of the rich young ruler. Because he had money and he was young and he had authority, so... Story of the rich young ruler. It's in a bunch of the Gospels. But I love this story, and I love this character. And Jesus loved this character. 
Matthew 19, start with verse 16. And actually, this played out in, I think, three of the Gospels tell the same story. But I like this guy. I like this guy. He comes to Jesus. He finds Jesus. He seeks him out. He kneels down. And he said, good master, good teacher, what must I do to have eternal life? And Jesus said, okay. And, and he just starts him off with the old, doesn't he? This guy finds Jesus. He searches him out and says, good teacher, what must I do for eternal life? And Jesus says, well, you know the law. And he says, what laws? And Jesus said, well, don't kill it. Don't commit murder. Honor your parents. He listed three or four, and the guy said, I'm good. I've obeyed these since my youth. I have done this. I've walked in this. What else is there? And actually, in the version of Mark, it says, Jesus looked at him right here and just loved him. Jesus looked at him and loved him. And then Jesus does what he does. He does the switcheroo. You're familiar with the old, aren't you? I'll tell you what I want you to do. I want you to love. I want you to give away your money. I want you to sell your possessions. I want you to give to the poor. I want you to love others with everything you have and follow me. And the ruler went away sad, didn't he? The ruler went away dejected because his heart was tied up in his wealth. When the Lord gets our heart, he gets everything. Come on, when the Lord gets our heart, he gets everything. This guy, that Jesus just loved him and said, man, you're almost kind of there. Let me tell you what I want you to do. Give up all these possessions, all this, these passions. Love others and follow me. He got the invitation, didn't he? Follow me. And he couldn't do it. His heart was tied up. In John 13 and 34, it says, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you. You also love one another. And in Galatians 5, 13 and 14, it says, You have been called to liberty, but do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word. Even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I think this new covenant law is more about doing than it is not doing. I think they were used to, I don't do this, I don't do this. The world looks at the church sometimes, it's like, oh, what you don't do? You don't do this, you don't do this. Love does. It serves, it gives. I think it's like the good Samaritan principle, isn't it? You guys are familiar with the story of the good, uh, good Samaritan. And they said, who do I love? Who is my neighbor? And Jesus said, whoever is in your pathway. Whoever is in your pathway. I was reading an article about Heidi Baker a while back. You guys familiar with her? Awesome, awesome woman of God. She's in one of the poorest places of Mozambique, ministering to a ton of children in just poverty. And she's just a powerful lady. And they said, how do you do it? How do you do it in the midst of the poverty, in the midst of everything? How do you how do you do it? And she said, I just love the one in front of me. That is our highest calling, to love God and love others. That is our law, isn't it? Go to Romans 13 with me. Romans chapter 13. How many, how many real Bibles do we have in the building? Come on, Barbara, love you. Tamara, love you. Cohen, love you, Nina. Blessing. 
and I really care about Dorian, thank you. And everyone else, I, I love it too. It's just, it's just something about, you know. Yes. Yes. Amen. Now all of us doing this probably get a newspaper too, right? Yes. I like a newspaper. I saw that article, John. It's good. No one else saw it. Romans 13, uh, starting in verse 8, says, Owe no man anything except to love one another, for he who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not covet, and if there is any other commandment, are all summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Is that powerful? Amen. We're going to have to go through Romans one day, the whole book, because that's, that's just powerful. I want to read it quickly in my living paraphrase, which I think is pretty cool. Me and me alone. <clears throat> Pay all your debts, accept the debt of love for others, and never finish paying that. For if you love them, you will be obeying all of God's laws, fulfilling all of his requirements. If you love your neighbor as much as you love yourself, you will not want to harm or cheat him or kill him or steal from him. You won't sin with his wife or want what, if, want what is his or do anything else the Ten Commandments say is wrong. All ten are wrapped up in this one, to love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love does no wrong to anyone. That's why it fully satisfies all of God's requirements. It is the only law you need. Love is the law. So I will say that I am not under the Ten Commandments. Um... God bless the Ten Commandments. I know a lot of people want to put them on a plaque and put them on walls everywhere, and it is powerful, but I don't think they are the foundation of Christianity. I think it is the love, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that we need to put up and declare. Amen. And I know when I say I'm not under the Ten Commandments, some of you may be saying, uh, what the heck are you talking about? What the heck are you talking about? You... Don't have to not murder. You can covet. What do you mean? They don't apply to you. But what I mean is, I am under the law of Christ. I am under the law of love, not the Mosaic law. So, because I love God, and because I love others, I will not murder. And because I love God, and because I love others, I won't be covetous. And because I love God and because I love others, I will honor my parents. Yeah. And because I love God and because I love others, I will not steal. Because I love God and because I love others, I will be a giver. Because I love God and because I love others, I will honor pretty much all the commandments because of love. Because of the law of love that's over me. I am not righteous because Moses came down from the mountain with two stone tablets. I am righteous because Jesus came down from heaven. Yes. And he poured out his love and his life for me, and he calls us to do the same. Amen. Amen. The old law said, an eye for an eye. The old law says, if he steals your goats, we you kick him in the shin, you give him two goats, and we're fair. It's like, all right, we'll go with that. Jesus said, no, let love rule. Turn the other cheek, and if he takes your coat, see if he needs your shirt. One of my favorite verses is Galatians 5, 6. Powerful, powerful verse. It says, for in Christ, and we are in Christ. We are in Christ, aren't we? For in Christ, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision matters. In Christ... Eating a pulled pork sandwich on a Sunday, whatever. In Christ, amen. 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 What are we doing for lunch? Today? 
In Christ, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision matters, but faith working in love. Yes. Faith and trust and belief and confidence is working, is alive, is giving in love. Everything wrapped and motivated in love, bottom line. And we know 1 Corinthians 13, we're mostly familiar with that passage on love. It says, if I'm amazing, if I'm anointed, if I am supernatural, if I have insight into everything, if I give up my life, it is nothing without love. Ephesians 5, 1 and 2 says, Be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love. Galatians 6, verse 2 says, Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. So what's the law of Christ? It's the law of love. Bear, another, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. The law of love. We get it? Yeah. Getting pretty clear? Yeah. That is the law. When our heart is right towards God and others, we can fulfill our destiny. We can walk in love and make a difference in this world. And one last verse in Colossians 3.14 says, But above all these things, but above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. Man, that just sounds big, powerful. Put on love, which is the bond of perfection. Do you want to be perfect? Love is the bond of perfection. I mean, they are equating these two, and it makes me go back to a verse in Matthew. Matthew chapter 5, where Jesus says, You shall be perfect, as my Father in heaven is perfect. Have you ever heard that verse and read it and said, uh, I don't think so. I mean, you shall be perfect as my Father in heaven is perfect. How do I walk that out? But I think of this verse here, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. Love is the bond of perfection. So I read it again, just changing perfection and love. And I read, you shall be loving as my Father in heaven is loving. And I'm like, I think I can do that. Above all else, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. It's like the, in, in that one part I didn't say in the rich young ruler story, um, Jesus said to him before he, he turned it inward, he said, do you want to be perfect? I think that's only in the Matthew part. But the kid said, I'm good. I've done all this. What else is there? And Jesus looked at him and said, do you want to be perfect? Do you want to be loving and hit him. And so just a couple points uh, to close with. Um, I think we get this. Love is the law. It is what we are called to do and love fulfills all the requirements. Love heals. Love saves. Love covers over sin. Amen. It is the greatest. Mm -hmm. So it's easy to understand that and hear this and grasp it but it's another thing carrying it out, isn't it? It's like I get that, and I want to do that. I want that to be me, but you know, people. <laughs> They're everywhere. <laughs> and you're messed up. <laughs> Just a couple things. One, we need to fully receive God's love. Amen. I think that is a big thing. I think that's lacking in, in the world, of course, and even in a lot of the church have not fully received the love of God, to know who they are. We cannot give away what we don't have, can we? You are loved, you are loved, Dion, you are so loved. You know how loved you are, dude. We are so loved by God, and when that is just in us, it can leak out, it can spill, it can, it, it's just going to. We need to receive the great love of God fully and know we are saints. We are forgiven. We are more than conquerors. We are seated with him in heavenly places. We are in Christ. And we are loved. 
and we can walk this out. And secondly, we just need to see people as God sees them, you know? God says, man looks on the outward and I look on the heart. We need to look inside because everyone is created in the image and the likeness of God to do the good things that God has put in them to do. So we need to see past stuff and just see they are a child of God and love, 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 and bring that out. Amen? Amen. Like my wife always says, she says, speak life, be loved, and shine on. Amen? Amen. Thanks for watching this message from Dad's House Church in Yakima, Washington. Be sure to check out dadshousechurch.org for other videos and more exciting information.